Hello everybody, hope you're doing really well and we are back with another episode of The Rumour Mill. Here we go, I hope all of you are doing fantastically well. I've seen a lot of you in the comment section below before the video has gone live. So yeah, a lot of a lot of big chat in the, um, well, in the comment section really. Keep all of your comments flooding in. We're going to be going on everything Leeds United today. Who's excited? Who's absolutely buzzing for the start of the season? I certainly am. Leeds United back in training very, very soon. And we will, you know, we're going to cover that a little bit as well. So I hope you're all doing fantastic. Well, 49 of you watching now, if you wouldn't mind slapping a like on the video, slapping a subscribe if you're if you if you're new to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, it's free. Hit that notification bell. That is also free. A two for one there for yourself. So make sure you do that. Make sure you are clocked in to the in full swing with Connor McGilligan. Hope you're all doing really, really well. Scott Worrell, morning, Connor. Hello, my friend. Uh, Connor McDonald, can't wait for the season. David Waring, A up from Melbourne. What a place. I lived there for six months, as I'm sure you all know. Um, Sensai looks good. Sensai looks good. Still think we need Buendia for Pablo. Then Striker comes down. Whether is Watkins, whether Watkins is available. Craig, friend of the channel. Morning, Connor. Looking forward to this live video. Jaggy D. Morning, Connor. Ian Cullinette. Morning, Connor. Hey, Connor from Paddy. Let's get into this, guys. Hello. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. Hope you've got a coffee, a cup of tea, whatever your morning ritual is. Get it down. Get it locked down with the in full swing with Connor McGilligan. And let's get into the first room. Now, the first one is a little bit of a big one for me, and it depends once again on tonight's fixture, the biggest fixture. I hope you're all going to be clocked in for that one as well. Brentford take on Fulham in the championship playoff final. What a huge game, not only for the Bees, not only for the Cottagers, but of course for Leeds United in the transfer mill, in the rumour mill, getting those certain players locked down, locked down to Leeds United, potentially if Either team comes out, um, you know, Brentford maybe potentially lose the game. We've seen today as well, apparently, if Fulham lose the game, Bournemouth are going to advance and make an offer for Scott Parker. So it's a massive game, a huge game, a pivotal game for both teams. Let's get into it. So the first rumour is Eze, Eberichi Eze, the 22-year-old attacker, was the hoop star man last season, scoring 14 goals in 46 appearances. And according to Sky Sports, the championship side had rebuffed Palace's opening bid for the London-born ace. Sun Sport has revealed how QPR have told tracking Eze, not a waste of time, but West Ham and Leeds, Leeds in bold there, are expected to join Palace in the battle to sign the England 21 international. Now, the reason I've brought up Eze, well, it's because of tonight. Now, if Brentford win this game tonight, if Brentford come out victorious... I think the next move will be as a QPR have said that they will not take anything less than 20 million pounds. But there is a rumoured fee. There is a rumour going around on all these sites, on these rumour sites, something that somebody's told me as well. Can't disclose who, can't disclose who told me it, but a club could get as a for 16, 17 million. Now, as I've completely waxed lyrical about this economic market is taking clubs, it's strangling clubs. Look at the business done by clubs right now. It's nada, nothing. You know, there is nothing being done right now by Premier League clubs. There's some outs, but there's not that many ins. You know, you look at some of the some of the transfer news that is going on. It's very, very low activity. The reason behind that, once again, guys, as I always say, the pandemic is strangling football. It's strangling the economy. It's strangling society as a whole. So you're expecting things to be going a little bit less. You're expecting things to be maybe transfers going for a little bit less. You know, players to be looking elsewhere, but maybe clubs getting a good, good value, a bargain deal. And I think Eze is going to be one of those players. And I tell you what, if we don't go for Ben Rama, I think Leeds are keeping tabs on this. And I think this is why, as I've said in numerous videos, the Whites, the Peacocks haven't made moves because we are looking at what is going on tonight in this huge game in the championship calendar. Um, as I say, guys, a lot of you are joining now, 190. I hope you're doing very, very well. Keep your comments flooding in. I'm going to try read them out. Towards the end of the video, we're going to structure it a little bit differently. Um, instead of me reading out your comments all the time, I'm going to try read them out at the end. I'll flutter some up on screen, but um, I won't be talking about absolutely all of them, guys. I'll get to them at the end because we've got a lot of news to get through. Um, don't want Batshuayi. We'll get on to Batshuayi in a bit. Hi, Connor. Loving being on board with the In Full Swing channel. Number one for Leeds United News. Thank you so much, all. What I'm trying to do is do a lot of research, you know, get everything 
done everything perfect for you guys around here, all the equipment, just get it into, you know, uh, this, you can come, you want some transfer news, get to the in full swing channel. If you're new, you know, get on board with the clan, get on board with the community and let's go. Um, Right. So the next rumor that Leeds United are looking at is someone who I know you guys will know about because it's been talked about on other news outlets as well. It is Jonathan Silver. The left back has informed his current club, Leganes, that Leeds United have an interest in this player. Now, we don't, we can't profess to know that much about Jonathan Silver. What I can tell you once again, as I said with Matty Longstaff yesterday, combative work rate through the roof. Go and have a look at Jonathan Jonathan Silver. Go and watch some of his highlights. Go watch him in a La Liga game. He is, he doesn't stop. He's an absolute utility man. Keeps going up and down, up and down. Work rate really, really good. So he's another one who, who you'd sort of you'd look at really and you think, is that going to be someone Leeds United could go for? Not only that, guys, but it's a left back. A left back who Leeds United have been, I mean, we've heard it from Phil Hay. We've heard it from the Athletic. Leeds are apparently in for a left back. Why? I don't know, because the depth we've got in that position is absolutely cataclysmic. You know, you look at Leif Davies, you look at Douglas, you look at Alioski, you look at Dallas. We've got so many players to fulfil that left back position, but maybe Marcelo thinks to himself, we need more. And there has been a link to Jonathan Silva there. Obviously, we're after LaRucci as well, which was a credible link from Liverpool. The Algerian 19-year-old was linked to Leeds United. So whether or not that's going to happen, who knows? But that's another left-back link from a credible source in Football Insider as well. So it, it, well, Leeds United are definitely going for these plays. You know, we've seen centre mids and we think, centre mids, why? But it's the depth. It's the depth. It's the strength in depth. If Leeds can recruit players for a good price, for a good wage, why not get them through the door so we can sustain a Premier League outfit? We can sustain a Premier League squad to go into this season. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. That's going to be something that we're going to have to keep a real big eye on because I tell you what, Jonathan Silva, what a player. You know, played at the top level, only 26 years old as well. So, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Now, the number three one that I want to touch on as well is Matty Longstaff. Now, I've done a little bit of a tactical breakdown on, on, on Matty Longstaff as well. I've gone a bit, done a bit of research on social media, seen what I can find. I've obviously looked on forums as well because I wanted to get a bit more of a breakdown for you guys reaching to the Sky Stars. Bit of S-Cup 7 there for you, uh, for you oldies. But yeah, here we go. So um, Longstaff is, a, is, is, is one of the players who's come through the Newcastle Youth Development Programme. Now, his brother was the one who came onto the scene very, very quickly. Sean, Long, uh, Sean Longstaff, his brother, um, a little bit taller, um, obviously fair-haired, both of them. And 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 and, and, and you, you thought you, when Sean came onto the scene, you thought, right, this is going to be a real player. Newcastle fans absolutely raving about him. His, his, his value was going through the roof, obviously, with him being a young English player as well. You know, we all know that people jump on the high when they're young, when they're English. That is just the way of the world in this country. Um, but Matty kind of came in under the radar, scored a cracker against Manchester United, had a brilliant game. He's played against Wolves, he's played against Chelsea. These standout games that I'm going to highlight in a second of where his positional play is and where he's sort of comfortable playing. And if he could fit into this Marcelo Bielsa team, is he a Bielsa player? Um, what I've been reading is apparently Newcastle United have had him on £750 a week, which is... Crazy. And apparently Longstaff and his agent want him to be on 20k a week and Newcastle have rejected that uh, offer from, from, from Longstaff. So essentially, uh, Matty Longstaff is, is in limbo right now and whoever's going to come to the fort and put the money down, he's probably going to go. Now, would he fit in the Bielsa team? Well, this is what some of the Newcastle um, outlets are saying about Longstaff. I found this one quite um, quite interesting and quite funny. Matty Longstaff to Leeds, apparently. Um, I hope he has a career-ending injury if he goes to those C-U-N-T-S. Honestly, if he goes to them, it shows a whole ambition or lack of ambition from the club. We know there's F all anyway. And I just found that quite funny, obviously, because Newcastle, you know, another one to add to the list of haters. Another one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it just shows that other clubs are looking at Leeds now. They are a viable option. Leeds United are a viable option. We're going up to the top league with so much artillery. Marcelo Bielsa, the big club link, the one city link, where I'm, you know, it's it's all compartmentalized into a big club, a big feel factor. And this is what I presume something like Matty Longstaff's going to see that. Sea leads are coming up, seeing this 16 year story has come to an end. We're coming back with one of the best coaches in the world. Come to Leeds, son. 
come to Leeds. Let's get you in there. Let's get you in the um, you know the breakdown. He's got Premier League experience now, which is something that we were vying for in the window. It's something that I've spoken about multiple times. Leeds needing Premier League experiences now with Matty Longstaff. He's going to bring that. He's going to bring exuberance. He's going to bring youth, pragmatism, dynamism. He's going to bring all of these things. Defensively astute, can get forward as well. Regimented in that Steve Bruce formation, which is just absolutely basic. Can we get more from his game? I completely think so. Um, now we're going to just look at a little bit of a breakdown of him. This is when he was playing Manchester United. Now, what's very interesting here is Longstaff was picking the ball up from deep consistently. And as you can see on screen now, it is that diagonal pass that he absolutely loves. The Calvin Phillips, the Liam Coopers about him as well. Longstaff gets the ball. He's always looking on his open foot. He gets it on his on, on his other side, opens his body and switches the ball. That is the Matty Longstaff blueprint. Now, what I was saying earlier is it's difficult for him to be able to do this consistently because Newcastle's way of playing is purely defensive. The, you know, the play to the strengths, they've done well this season in terms of keeping it locked in. For me, they've still got a bit of a championship squad. Now, that's no disrespect to Newcastle, I'm sure. A lot of them would admit this, but I don't believe they've got that pure Premier League outfit aside from someone like um, Alan St. Maximan, who is a wonderful player, but he could get picked off very soon as well by a PSG. But what I love about Longstaff here and what you've see, what you seen multiple times is he opens his body, switches that play, and that is something, don't get me wrong, that is something that Leeds United will have looked at, will, will have, will have analysed and, and will be seeing that. Now, if you look at this here, Matty Longstaff, this is when he was playing against Wolverhampton Wanderers and this is something similar as well. He's in a tight area and look what he's trying to do straight away, opening his body and trying to send Almiron on his way. He's looking for the space. Uh, um, Alan St. Maximan and Almiron are always playing on the back uh, on the back line, sort of playing on the shoulder as well. Almiron consistently looking to run in behind. Matty Longstaff is always looking for that space in behind. So that's really interesting. And obviously, we'll move on here. This is what I was talking about earlier. What Longstaff naturally does is he's covering. You know, he's covering for that other centre midfielder to go forward. You know, whether or not that's going to be a John Joe Shelby, whether or not it's going to be his brother, Sean. Matt sort of fits really in in that defensive mould, but he always looks to go forward as well. And that has been his undoing sometimes, his disciplined nature within this Newcastle side, this defensive outlet. Matty Longstaff is always, he sometimes gets caught out because he's trying to go forward. Now we know with the Marcelo Bielsa setup that he will have that licence to go forward. Of course he will. So that's going to be the interesting uh, mover really, whether or not Leeds are going to go in for that, whether or not that is going to be a go up, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I do think tactically he will fit into Leeds United's outfit quite nicely. Now the, the next rumour guys I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on is obviously I know a lot of you have been talking about this. It is Mitchy Batshuayi. Now the reason Leeds are going to be interested in this guy for me is because, I mean, wow, he's a, he's a He's a, I mean, he's an international, isn't he? He's a brilliant player. Leeds are keeping close tabs on Michi Batshuayi's situation after being told Chelsea will listen to reduced price offers. Now, the reduced price thing is obviously going to be attractive to Leeds United. It's obviously going to be attractive to anybody in this coronavirus pandemic, economic climate crash, whatever you want to call it. It's always going to be interesting when players, good players, are going to be going for cheap now. He's a Belgian. He's a Belgian international. He's a brilliant player. You cannot tell me you wouldn't be buzzing with a Mitch, Mitchy Batshuayi. What a signing that would be. What a signing of intent. Still young. Still got years and years ahead of him. He's played with the best in the world. Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard. You know, he's played with he's played with so many good players. You can't even count it down, you know. So if some Leeds were to get someone like Mitchy Batshuayi, he's also played under Marcelo Bielsa. He's also played under Marcelo Bielsa. Nine goals and I believe about six assists as well under Marcelo Bielsa. And I believe that was at Marseille. So he's had the experience. He knows the Bielsa way. He's clearly thrived even under a sort of um, a smaller period, obviously, with, with what happened with Bielsa leaving, et cetera, et cetera, Batshuayi leaving. So it, it is one of those where... It's, that would be an incredible signing for me. You know, what a statement of intent if we can get him for the cheap, whether or not that'd be 15, whether or not that'd be 20 million. You know, we're all talking about Jonathan David, but Michi Batshuayi, Michi Batshuayi, Michi Batshuayi. I mean, this guy was lauded as the next big thing. He was lauded as the next Didier Drogba two or three years ago when he was signed for, um, um, uh, for, for, for Chelsea from Marseille. You know, came from that similar blueprint as well, banging him in from Marseille, lauded him over there. So what did Chelsea do? Brought him in dubbed him the next Didier Drogba. So listen, that would be an incredible signing, an incredible signing for me. Um, and I'll be interested to hear what you guys think about that as well. Um, Batshuayi would be my choice for striker, says Joey D. Um, Batshuayi on loan 
with option to buy rather than uh, sort of folking cash up front. Less than 25 mil. Would rather have Watkins for 18. That's really interesting. Quality player as well. You know, there's some really good comments there and keep getting them in, guys. And that's really interesting. Some people thinking that Watkins would be the better signing. I mean, you talk about Marquee, you talk about Adidas kit reveal, you talk about all this sort of build up for Leeds United to get into the top division. Would you not rather have a Michi Batshuayi, ex Valencia, ex Marseille coming to Leeds? The, the story, you know, he's reunited with Marcelo Bielsa, he's played under his way, he knows the regime. Would you not rather have that than an Ollie Watkins who has to sort of fit to that regime, doesn't know what he's getting himself into five, six weeks. It could be it could be eight, nine weeks before he features for this Leeds United side. If you get where I'm coming from, guys, it's a really interesting talking point. Um, so the next rumour I'm going to touch on as well is Marcos Senesai. Now, Everton are interested in signing Marcus Senesai. Feyenoord want around 18 million. Now, the reason I mention that is this guy is lauded. Now, I've watched a lot of him before. I like watching the Dutch leagues. I'm a little bit of a nerd. I am a bit of a geek. You guys know that when I'm flashing things up, done a bit of research, all this sort of stuff, talking statistics, which a lot of you guys might find boring. Um, but listen, statistics win your game. Analytics, when you review them, when you progress with them, they win you games. So uh, I look at Marcus Senesai. He plays the left of a back three you can play in a back four as well if you if you want to go to a 4141 which leads might keep up in the Premier League because it's regimented defensively we have to be disciplined in the Premier League so are you going to put three at the back I'm not 100% sure obviously it depends whether or not you're going to have like a Southampton with Shea Adams and Danny Ings up front the two up top we know Bielsa likes to play the 3-3-1-3 even in the top leagues so I still think that is going to be part of our, our our play really our formations our variations in formations so I think that Marcos Senesai is one of those versatility players. Now, it is very interesting because th this is highlighted by Dutch Networks as well, as you can see on screen right now. And a little bit of information about Marcus, um, his nationality, is Argentine, shock, horror. But guys, what I will say before I go on to a little bit more, this guy's played in the Europa League. This guy's played against some of the best teams in Europe. So he knows the demands. He understands what it is to be on this continent. And that's why, you know, we we're talking about Argentinians before, you know, we talk about um, um, Quarter, obviously Leeds who were interested in Quarter. My worry was the fact that he was going to come from a completely different continent and, and get thrown into the best league in the world with someone like Senesai. We can see here that he's 22 years old. He's played for Feyenoord, you know, um, central defender, preferred foot left. And he's played in, you know, he's played in one of the best competitions in the in, in the in the world, in the Europa League. So that is a huge beneficiary. That is a huge advantage on going for someone, for me, who has complete, completely just been plucked out of, you know, I'm sure that they've scouted, obviously, Quetta and he's, and he's, you know, he's, he's a superb player, I presume. Zoom that, but I would rather in a six week spell have someone who has played at that level before. Let me know what you think in the comments section um, below. But this is sort of an analysis as well, which I found as well on Senesai. What he's very good at is something he's good at playing out from the back. Now he reminds me of Ben White hugely. I would, I would, I would. I would say to all you guys, I can't play the footage on screen because that would be copyright, but please go check him out. Marcos Senesai. Look at how he plays. Look at how he passes the ball. Look at his pace. He reminds me of Ben White. There are more Ben Whites out there. Don't get me wrong. Ben White's a terrific player. I'm not saying we're not in for him at all, but what a wonderful player this kid is. Please go check him out. Very young. And this is a little bit of a breakdown of what I'm talking about here. He's got the Ben Whites about him. You can see the stature, very similar as well. And what he does is he likes to bring the ball out. Now, I've seen a lot of Dutch players. I got in contact with the Dutch mate last night who said sometimes he can get caught out. But listen, as you can see here, when he's receiving the ball, he's opened his body up. And as a centre-back, you never normally do that. It's a closed body. He's passing across to your other centre-back. He can play with both feet, which is a huge thing as well. And he's always looking to go forward. He's always looking for the ball to be pressed forward into the midfield or to the attacking spaces or clipped on down the line. But he's very confident coming into that midfield, coming into that um, attacking third as well. So those two thirds there, they're going to be exposed when you've got a quality centre-back. And he's confident on the ball and he's played against some of the best players in the world as well. So as you can see here, this is he was in that defensive position before. He's already marauding out of the defence here, as you can see where the square is. And this is, a, this is a position that Ben White used to take up consistently, marauding out, making the space for the offensive players. And that is why Leeds got up the pitch so, so quickly because of Ben White's ability to get into that midfield third. Here he is as well, looking straight away. I mean, look how much he's come up the field there. The the, the winger obviously knows there what Senesai is about. He's going to be playing the ball in and behind. And that is one of those things where... <laughs> 
I mean, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. You know, if we're not going to be getting Ben White, this is one of those rumours that hopefully will come to the fore. I mean, what a w- wonderful player. I would, I, would, I would advocate all of you go and check him out. A really good player. The left side. The interesting thing would be a left-sided uh, centre-back and another left-sided centre-back. But as somebody mentioned to me the other day, when Leeds won the league, we had McQueen and Hunter. Both left-footed centre-backs. What a brilliant point that is. Listen, you might be left-footed, but if you can use both feet, <laughs> we've seen with Stuart Dallas, it works perfectly well. Um, so, yeah, let's have a look at some of your guys' comments on, on what I've been talking about. Uh, a lot of people talking about Ben White and how it would be career suicide. Um, left-footed with two left-backs. That, yeah, Kaya, that's a really good point. And that's what I just try to illustrate there. I think that that would work. But Senesai, because Senesai does play with both feet, I think that would definitely work. Um, Sam agreed. Bamford is world class. Listen, turned a lot of people's heads around as Bamford. He's done really, really well. Um, some really good comments here. Batshuayi over Watkins any day. Knows the Bielsa way. International player would fit in nicely um, to the to the to the Leeds United way. A lot of people talking as well about, about you know, career suicide for Ben White. And that would be really interesting, wouldn't it, if he did go there? I do think it would be. Obviously, the odds were shortened on Ben White yesterday going to Liverpool. I think he's actually favourite now to go to Liverpool, which is why, guys, we need to explore. We need to explore other avenues. Mick Bedford saying Batshuayi wages through the roof. Agreed. But, but listen, Mick, if what we can do is we can get a lower transfer fee and then we can increase the wages, I think that's a way forward. I think that's a way of being marketable. I think that's a way have been tactically astute. We've got to realise now, guys, Leeds United are going to earn some serious money over the next five years. I think it was banded around £256 million in a report I saw the other day. So Leeds, we're a Premier League club. We need to get out of these champions, championship mentality. We also need to forget about 03, about 04. You know, me and my dad are talking about it all the time, the financial degrade, degradation that happened to Leeds United. We need to get that out of our head. It's a different club, different owners, different strategies, and we're in the Premier League now. We need to remember that. So let's get on to the next bit of news. Um, Yeah, and this is the uh, news about James McCarthy. An interesting one here. Leeds United are reportedly rivaling Aston Villa, West Ham and Newcastle to the potential signing of Crystal Palace midfielder James McCarthy. (laughs) McCarthy's been a regular for the Eagles since signing from Everton after struggling um, with injuries in his time with the Merseyside-based club. The midfielder has made 35 appearances in all competitions for for Palace in 2019-20 as they finished 14th in the standings. Now, this one for me, not a goer, not a goer. You know, once again, I'll give this a one, two, three out of 10. James McCarthy, I don't think he'd be able to fit in our system. Not combative enough, not energetic enough, sort of sits just in front of the defence. But once again, it gives you that indication of what we're looking for. If we can get him on the cheap, Bielsa's turned water into wine, as I said the other day, by turning certain players into miracle players. So if you can do that with someone like James McCarthy, what an addition he would be. He's a Premier League player, been up there for years. I don't see it as having legs, but if Bielsa can massively improve him, that would be incredible. But I, I just don't know if he can do that in the time span. But our league's just looking for depth now. Depth, 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 because we've got nothing off the bench. You know, five substitutes next year, guys. Five substitutes next year. We need to fill those holes. You know, even if... Longstaff, even if someone like McCarthy's not going to be featuring regularly for Leeds United, we need that depth off the bench because if you're getting even to a smaller team, you know, or, or to one of the big teams and they're bringing off some artillery off the bench, we need to be able to do that. Unfortunately, this sounds horrible, but I don't know if you can have a Robbie Gotts. I don't know if you can have a, you know, a Bogus coming off the bench. And that's what we had in the championship. You know, I know they didn't make massive appearances, but they're on the bench and they're ready to come on. There needs to be depth on that bench. There has to be. You and I know that. There needs to be Premier League depth on that bench for me. Um, so, yeah, that, that's 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 an interesting one, obviously. Um, Slam Dunk coming on here and saying Longstaff, not McCarthy. Um, Connor Dangerfield, Brighton will try and sell him as much as possible. I agree with White, but I just... Uh, I don't think they can do that in the economic market. They're not in a position right now, Brighton. You know, the the fans can come on here and say all they want, you know, but it's not, they're not in a position. You know, we saw that yesterday with the athletic article. So that'll be really interesting. It'll be a shame, but there will be backups there. I'm I'm pretty convinced of it. Um, Right, let's have a look what more we've got for you guys today. This might be a little bit more news on, it was on Senesai. I'm going to go back to that. The news was relayed by Fox Sports in the Netherlands who added more meat to the bones and claimed that Senesai follows Martin Flores on Instagram. Obviously, we know the Martin, Martin Flores link. They claim that Feyenoord manager Dick Advocat doesn't want to lose the Argentinian under-23 international, but asked what happens when Leeds open their wallet. Fox Sport claimed that Feyenoord would sell the centre-back for £18 million. We obviously know with no disrespect the Eredivisie over there, the Dutch league, 
There's not as much money. There's nowhere near as much money as there is in the Premier League now, as there is in Leeds United's wallets. We go over there with the wallet. It, it's so dependent on what happens in these next couple of days. You know, if 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 Brighton decides to come back and give us a bit of a valuation, we know we're in there. You know, if we see what's going on tonight with Brentford Fulham, we know we're in there. We know we can make movements dependent on that. We don't get Ben Rama if Brentford do go, you go for Eze. You don't get Ben White, you go for Senesai because he's such a quality player. We'll have contingency plans. We know Bielsa has drawn up a list of five players in every single position from difficulty to attainable. So keep your mind on that. Um Obviously, guys, this one is a bit of a different one. Cam Brannigan at Oxford. The Oxford midfielder was a Liverpool starlet, um, but he signed for Oxford after a loan spell at Fleetwood. Now, apparently, there is a lot of interest from Leeds United in Cam Brannigan. He's, he scored 13 and provided 13 assists in 104 games since signing from Liverpool in January 18. Oxford United fans do the club. Club needs to tie Brannigan down to a new deal. And that was a lot of Oxford fans saying, yes, we do. He's a great player. We don't want him to go. All this sort of stuff. Once again, we're talking about that Brannigan bracket of of obviously League One coming up to the Premier League. Is that going to be someone we're interested in? Who knows? Um, and uh, this was the last one, guys, I wanted to finish on just to wrap up. Rangers are in advanced no negotiations with Belgian giants and elect for the signature of former Leeds United striker Kimar Roof. Roof's injury problems since joining Anderlecht last year for a fee of around £6 million have affected his time in Belgium and he's only scored six times in 13 appearances for the club. Now, that is a good record. Six in 13, you know, we all got really upset when Roof did go. Um, but once again, you know, uh, yeah, I think it was a, a justified decision and, you know, Roof went there. And the reason I bring that up once again, it's this link, isn't it? This fusion of if if Roof goes to Rangers, you're going to look at Morelos being moved on because otherwise Rangers wouldn't have gone in for Roof. Morelos being moved on to potentially Lille, obviously, Lille going in for numerous strikers right now. Does that open up Jonathan David to come to Leeds United? Do you want Jonathan David uh, at Leeds United? Get it in the comment section below because obviously we've heard some we've heard some things where he doesn't seem that keen, does he, <laughs> at this moment in time? Um, and obviously this was Phil Hay. Sean Daly said to him when they're back in training, only six weeks to go. Phil Hay coming back and saying next week, so it's all going to be coming round very very quickly, guys. We know that. Um, it's going to be a, a, a big one, I think. And obviously, um, uh, Alice Sadiq here has just said, how about Mohamedi? Obviously, Mohamedi has been linked the left back um, to Leeds United. Once again, the left back link, which I keep saying, you know, we need to get it trending, don't we? The left back link. Um, but it is one of those things. Leeds are clearly interested in the left back. And I think Phil Hay alluded to that. Leeds United, I've heard the kit release will be this week. I am pretty certain the kit release will be this week. It will just be interesting. Now, Ollie Davis says, will the kit release be with a marquee signing? Um, yeah, the fact Bielsa likes small squads puts us in a predicament. I do agree with that, but Bielsa has played. He's well, obviously he's played at a top level as well, but he's managed at the top level as well with you know Marseille, obviously Espanyol, numerous other clubs as well. So it is one of those. He'll know exactly what to expect. You've got to think as well. There'll be less games. It'll be Saturday, Saturday, Saturday instead of Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Sunday, Tuesday. So we've we've got to bear that in mind. There are positives as well as a couple of negatives. And um, Connor, what's your view on Augustin? German sources think Leipzig have a case uh, a lot of money involved in this and yeah that could be another another issue as well you know the fact that Augustan the Augustan deal we've got to keep an eye on that one I do think they're going to get a case for it I do think they're going to get some money out of Leeds United I've spoken to a couple of people and I do think I just think Leeds will hopefully not be able to front up that full money uh, but let's not worry about that right now I don't think that's having implications on the fact that we're not spending money because we're clearly scouting players we're clearly interested I think tonight is huge for Leeds United um Romash as well, saying he had a great squad in Bilbao as well, yet small squad. And Herrera came out and just said, what a wonderful squad he had. Lorente there as well, Munyain. So Bielsa knows even with the small squad, he can he can work that. Um, any update on Buendia if Brentford don't go? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of talk. Leeds have definitely approached um, uh, Buendia. I've been I've been told that um, from a good source as well. Um, you know, if that does happen, we will get talk Norwich City back on the back on the pod to talk through. Him. But uh, you know, Leeds are definitely interested there. I think everything depends on tonight. You know, if we don't go for Ben Rama, which I do think is one of our number one targets, movement will start straight away with either Buendia or Eze. Um, Let's have a look. Yeah, someone's saying, who do you want to win tonight? Uh, I want uh, Fulham to win. <laughs> so we can potentially pick off um, Brentford's two best players who I feel will be able to get in the uh, Premier League and be able to sort of sustain in that Premier League pretty nicely. Um, 
yeah, so it's going to be interesting, guys. A lot of rumors there. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, we've got we've got everything sort of out at the minute, obviously, with the in full swing. I'm looking at a bit of a logo redesign as well, um, just because I want people to know as well that my Leeds United content is is pretty much consistent every single day. So I'm looking at that. Also, guys, I hit 3,000 subscribers last night, which I can't tell you how much that means to me. I cannot tell you how much that means to me. And I, I just want to talk to you right now and and, and, and be real. You know, I'm, I'm a real guy. I'm a genuine guy. I'm a down-to-earth guy. And uh, that means the world to me. You know, it re- I'm, I'm putting a lot of work into this, a lot of work into this. Um, probably, as you can see, from the bags under my eyes. But um, thank you so much for everything um, uh, right now. You've given me so much support. And to go from last week when I was on 424 subscribers, I think it was, to nine days later, 10 days later, I've been on 3,000. That is a mesmeric uh, rise. And, and clearly, you guys enjoy something I'm doing. I don't know why you do, but <laughs> but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means, it means means the world it genuinely means the world right here um i'm not one of these youtubers who comes on and says thank you and then just doesn't give a crap and goes and, and gets bougie and have some champagne i'm being real with you you know if i see any of you we can have a pint when lockdown's back open and please keep it locked in with the in full swing channel if you haven't subscribed please make sure you do um as i've said before guys i'll just i'll just i'll just uh flow this up as well just so you can see it as well you know subscribing wise there's a fair few of you not subscribed so if you wouldn't mind doing me a solid that'd be absolutely incredible it helps me out a lot because i just understand what you guys like i understand what i'm doing is right and 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 that genuinely does mean the world and it helps so much so thank you all the all the positive comments uh <laughs> before thousand by the end of the day listen i wouldn't care if i was talking to 10 of you i genuinely wouldn't i just love talking about football and i love love producing media content so that's all this channel's for i love the interaction so please keep it locked in with us well i was about to say it, us it's me just me <laughs> one man team um but yeah listen I hope you have a cracking day. Have a good day. Keep smiling. Keep healthy. Keep happy. And we're in the Premier League, guys. We're in the Premier League. Don't worry. Keep that smile on your face because Leeds will get these dealings done soon. Enjoy the playoff. Have a pint on me and I'll I'll catch you in a bit, guys. 